It's an international friendly. Egypt versus Argentina from Cairo on Goal TV. Hello and welcome as we get set for action here today at the Cairo International. Jamal Hamoudi, the referee, leading out the two sides. And Argentina dreaming of a championship. Tops in the world taking on a team that has a championship already in hand. The African Cup of Nations going to Egypt yet again and playing host to mighty Argentina. Phil Shane along with Ray Hudson. Well, this is one of the bright spots of international soccer. Conflicting styles and all to play for. Tremendous interesting international friendly, Phil, as you say. The champions, the kings of Africa, Egypt, twice crowned in successive African Nations Cup against the world's number one team, Argentina. Take a look at Sam El Hadri. It will be in goal. Goma, Said, Mahwad, and Shaki in the back line. Abdul Rabouk, along with Fatih Hassan and Abu Treka in the midfield. Motaib and Zidane will be in the attack for Hassan Shahata. Again, a African Cup of Nations in tow, but a game against Argentina will have all of the world looking on. Argentina going with Pato Abanancieri in net. Zanetti, Di Michelis, Bordiso, and Heinze along the back line. It'll be Lucho Gonzalez on the right, Maxi on the left, Mascherano and Gago anchoring with El Cuno Guero and the Gardner looking to harvest a few goals. Julio Cruz up front for Alfio Basile. Again, a few interesting call ups as Argentina trying to figure out who will be in their run for their next World Cup qualifiers, while Egypt already won championship in tow. Getting set to put that on the line. Egypt hosting Argentina. Beautiful night in Cairo. Let's find out if it ends beautifully for Egypt. All the flags, the color, the pageantry, the fans coming out. Cairo, of course, one of those international capitals along with Paris, London, and New York. And of course, a lot of people wanted to take a look and see how this one plays out. And for Hassan Shahata, a lot on the line here today. They have actually dressed their entire African Cup of Nations championship side. There are more people in uniform on the bench than there are on the pitch right now for Egypt. And that's kind of a touch of honor. Of course, they are limited to the friendly substitution list. Argentina, meanwhile, with the standard dress 18. Egypt in red. Argentina will be in their familiar blue and white. And as we get set for action, Jamal Hemodi with the whistle in hand. 100,000 plus can fit into this stadium. As you can see, a few empty seats here for this midweek encounter. Wouldn't be surprised if. Uh, a few people might be at home flipping through some of the World Cup qualifiers that will be on display today. But that does not diminish what we have here today. A matchup of champions, top teams in the world and the African Cup of Nations. Hamodi looks like he's about ready for action and so are we. Argentina with Alfio Basile. What do they have to prove here as we are underway? They're going to have to prove that they can do without Juan Roman Raquelme. That's the first priority, Phil. This is a makeshift team. Without Riquelme, the Albi Celesti are a totally different animal, and Basile is welcoming that challenge. Playing without Roman, he says, alters everything. There's no replacing the genius of Riquelme, but we have to go on, and it's a reorganized team. As you said, Mascherano and Gago, these two will be the link men. Well. Pushed forward, Aguero oh, making the in. run, but it's off to the far oh. side and blasted wide of the post. Lucho Gonzalez stepping in, but sending it wide. Terrible first touch by Lucho Gonzalez. He looks across for Cruz, I believe. I don't think this is an absolute hit at goal. He's looking for the back post. It's a disappointing hit. Beautifully found over the top, Lucho. He has got another point to prove. He is one of the men for Argentina needs to step his game up. He's been playing tremendously well at his club football. 
as we look at the great Shihata. Marvellous job with this country's team, Egypt. Twice reigning champions of the continent. Not as though they went in as favorites either. No, they started that competition. They just got through basically in the qualification, but they come good at the right time. Ball from the outside. They from truly Adrabon. looked absolutely indomitable during that African Cup of Nations. There wasn't many teams fancied playing against Egypt, and they went through imperiously. In those two African Cup of Nations that they won, Phil, back to back, they did not lose a game. So this is a competitive, solid team that Argentina's up against here. Decided First foul so. of the game. Having said that, Argentina should be ahead already. Down goes Maxi Rodriguez. Talked about not playing with Riquelme, not playing with Lionel Messi, also a big hamstring for Alfio Basile. Shahata, yeah. meanwhile, with pretty much of a full crew. Well, there's no question, Phil, that this Argentina side missing the two biggest stars in Riquelme and Messi, but it's Riquelme who casts the biggest influence over this team, and that is not taking anything away from the wizardry of Lionel Messi. Oh. Now a blast over the bar and a foul, a whistle just beforehand. Gago in the midfield with Mascherano. Nicely off at the back, and Gago comes on, steps through it. Just kind of get enough over the top. Nice provided ball in. Looks like Settles it wouldn't have it counted nicely. even if it had Should gone have in. Been a corner kick anyhow. Called the foul beforehand. And that would have. Well, no, he didn't. Points to the quarter flag. Cunaguero, not the tallest player, but pesky enough to get his head to some of these. He got his head against his head there at the weekend in an astonishing outburst. Not a broken nose, but a bloody one. There, see the captain, Ahmed Hassan, now running up front. Julio Cruz. Just when you count him out, seems to be getting better and better. Here's the nice move by Abrabu on the left side. El Hadri, over 100 caps for Egypt. Stepping in. As you said, a wonderful through. tip of the hat from the Egyptian coach, Shihata. Just a total recall of every player that won the African Cup of Nations. He's brought everybody back to a man. These are the heroes of Egypt. The pharaohs, as they're called, the nickname, up against FIFA number one. Fleets out for Gago and a little bump for Mainza. Missile does that to his wife on the way to the breakfast table. You see me calling all the European players, of course. None of the boys from over there in Argentina being called in. They're all still involved with the Copa Libertadores, of course. So you make it, it's a good variation on a theme. It's a great exercise for Argentina. It's not a bad ball in that. Little smile from Treca as he only looks on, unable to do anything with it. That's a good ball in. Abu Trika, one of the best players in this team. Got to keep your eye on him. Beautiful ball played in by Hassan, the captain. Hassan, the number 17, the influential player for Egypt. Two players to keep your eye on. If you're not too familiar with these boys in the red shirts, is the captain, Hassan and Abu Trika, the 22, number 22, wonderful player. Two players of genuine gale and class. Running back, Israel Goma along the back line. Could see Egypt go to a three-man back as well with Goma around Hani and Shadi Mohammed, the borough defender. Sixth minute, still no score. Each team has had a good chance. Ball stolen away from Lucho Gonzalez. Abu Trika to the middle. Hassan back out towards the flank. Mahuad into the middle. Knocked down. And then finally cleared away. A little scrambling. Of course, a cross-Atlantic trip from Argentina. They spent much of the day on the training pitch and in the hotel. No sightseeing as they try and recover. Gago whistled for another foul. This time on Mohamed. 
And that's how seriously they're taking this Argentine. Brian Trust there. Alfio and his assistants not letting the boys go and see the pyramids or the Sphinx or any of that. They're fully concentrated, no sightseeing to us. Or it's all about business. Paints it. Tripped up unintentionally, says Hassan. Now, when you were on these tours, though, in some ways that can have a a counter effect, can it, to the point where sometimes you get cabin fever? I mean, after all, it is a friendly, isn't it? Well, like we said, Bill, this is a meaningful one. This is a team Argentina. They're going to be looking at this as a real serious tune-up and see not just how they play without the magician Riquelme, but also how they fare against an African side coming into the World Cup in 2010, Argentina. And this is as good as they're going to be able to see from the African continent. The genuine champions, make no mistake about it. This Egyptian side won that competition fair and square and beat all of the glamour boys, like the Cameroon. They're expected to knock Egypt off, as you said, Phil. They didn't come into that tournament looking very good at all. There's Al Hadari in serious trouble with his club, training with the youths right now. He's out of favour, but he's in the national team. Ball headed up and over the bar off a good corner, and it was Bordiso who thought he had it. Uh, he's angry at himself for not making more of this. Bordiso rises beautifully, powerful header, brilliantly found, but kind of directed down under the bar of El Hadari. Played all the action every minute, did El Hadari for Egypt in the nets. 35 years of age, you can understand perhaps why his club, Al Ali, is trying to perhaps find a replacement, but obviously Shahata quite comfortable with the veteran in net. Fighting for Hassan, has to drop it back. Ani Saeed pushing it forward. One player you didn't mention yet, might be the most dangerous, is Mohamed Sidan. Mm -hmm. International veteran as we take a look at him now with Hamburg. Yeah, not playing too consistently with Hamburg. Unfortunately, as you said, Phil, rightfully, classy player. Certainly one of the best players in the Bundesliga, but doesn't get his chance as often as what he or the Egyptian coach would like. He's up to the mark. Uh, Ball launched long, again deflected, and again to the corner flag. He'd love to see an early goal, bring this crowd into them. Really be a fire underneath this impassioned crowd. But they've got to keep Argentina quiet early in this first half. Goma all over Cruz as the ball headed down, but off target and wide. It'll be a goal kick for Samuel Hadri. Well, certainly aerial dominance prevailing. A spectacle here for these fans. It's all Argentina strength and Wonderful timing on the leap there by Abby Heinze. And again, married himself, as was Berdiso. Long ball forward, headed back by Heinze. Acrobatic clearance, Dimichelis up to the midfield and a bump. And a foul for quickly taken. By Hassan as Egypt trying to get some momentum. Off to Hani Saeed. Been a clear one, hasn't seen much of the ball in the opening 10 minutes. But he'll be around the entire game. So yeah. interesting exclusions from Basilea. All these European players that he's been calling in. No Gonzalo Rodriguez or Garay is another one that I've thought, along with Banega, that might have been drafted in to Argentina's friendly exhibition here. As I said, some players out there in the Albi Celeste shirts got a point to prove to their countrymen, their fans, and the coach. He said it once, I'll just say it one more time, Lucho Gonzalez is the man, the number 16 for Argentina, that's really got to make a statement out of this game. 
or his coach. Trying to tuck it through. Gago and now sliding it to the front line. Aguero, nice return pass from Cruz. Kuhn to the end line. Saeed all over him. Deflected out. It'll be a throw in for Egypt. Good defense, although scrambling. Saeed Mahwad, the last man over. Now we'll go back the other way. Of course, that's really one of the big tests. As we take a look at the Argentine bench for Alfio Basile is to find that tandem. And he's interesting to find out how a red hot Aguero blends with Julio Cruz, who was playing so well earlier in the year. Maxi over on the oh. right into the middle. El Havri goes down to the boot level to knock it out. Over 500 appearances for Al Ali. And I guess he's probably been kicked a few Super times. Clear by Maxi Rodriguez out way. It's a beautiful ball. And should Cruz have came in with his head on this one, he sees the ball coming and it's flighted in beautifully, but a little lethargic in attacking it. The big end, a Milan man. But as you said, Phil, El Hadari coming out and suffocating it bravely for coach Chihata. He has a few players long in the tooth, as you said, 35 year old to keep up, but still a good net minder. And again, Dino's off one a World Cup at 40. And Egypt has to be considered as though they have an outside shot. Did make it to the World Cup in 34 and in 1990. Textbook Argentine possession, spraying it around nicely, finding the shirts beautifully and again. Interesting switch also. They put Maxi on the right and Lucho on the left. And Lucho not that comfortable on his left foot. Another whistle against Argentina. And Lucho and Kuhn trying to win the ball back. Alfredo into the middle for Hassan. Down the far side, Zidane. Mohamed Zidane. Zidane into the area and down across the end line. Guided out by the Argentine captain Javier Zanetti. Speaking of ageless veterans. Cambiasso, another player that was expected to make an appearance for Argentina. A late withdrawal, Cambiasso. And got to say that Alfio Basile could have probably used a little bit more imagination in this lineup for Argentina. It's not saying that there's not plenty of flair out there. There's nothing else when you wear the Argentina shirts but flair it's in their DNA but you look at Mascherano and Gago as they're holding midfield players it looks as if it's going to be down the flanks through Machi Rocks Rodriguez and Lucho Gonzalez down the side here's Lucho it's going cutting. to be providing the bullets for Cruz and Aguero Gago gets a difficult ball it's to handle in totally chance different sort of way of playing Phil it cannot be overstated for Argentina now off to the near side. Said pushing it forward. But there's going to be times when Basile has got to do without Riquelme, the orchestrator. Hassan. And this is a different sort of pattern of play from Fati. Argentina. Dangerous into the middle. Looked like a bump. And Motheab getting one of his first opportunities. Nowhere near was it really, though. A poor ball in. Out wide. Good position. Flights it in. Fati. But again, it's way ahead of Motayeb. Gets the applause. The intention was right, but we're delivering into the danger area. Far side, Goma going in a little too hard. Whistle by Hemodi and a foul against Egypt. Another collision, another whistle Still by in. Hamodi. Play on. No, it's not out of clear. Now, forward from the back line, Mohammed. He's tripped up, and this time there is a whistle. I'm not so sure the about down. this. Heinzig reaches in from the side in recovery and gets a good piece of the ball right here. Not too sure. Seemed to be more of a tangle of legs. Gago. 
holding, but the referee gives advantage. Hainsey comes in, fair tackle. Now that goes back the other way, and this game starting to disintegrate just a touch. Perhaps a little bit of revenge for Ahmed Hassan. Egypt starting its World Cup qualifying. <laughs> Congo, May 30th. As they're paired with the Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi and Djibouti in Group 12 of the African World Cup qualifying. Pretty good bet they'll make it oh, out of there. Yeah, and now up for Lucho. Flips it forward for Kuhn, but behind him, deflected. Out comes Maxi, cleared off the line, and pushed away at the last moment by Abradou. No, it's Hani Saeed. Saeed does brilliantly to dish this one away. Maxi Rodriguez, tenacity, finds its way through. It's a nice lead ball by Lucho. Beautiful invention here by Maxi, but Saeed just doing enough to beat the Argentine to the jump last nanosecond. Brave play again, nice sweet ball in, and there it's all. Maxi gets a bit of the rub of the green here, a bit fortunate. Mohammed, the player who kicked it up and off of Maxi, now off the corner, headed wide. Oh, They're getting closer and closer. This time it's Dimichelis. No, if they're getting closer and closer, Phil, I'm not so sure. I think they're getting worse. They're getting free headers inside the box of Egypt, and this time it's Dimichelis rises powerfully he's the third defender that's missed what should be fundamental tuckaways for these colossus at the back for argentina three fabulous headers from burdiso heinze and now di michelis but accuracy is not there powerfully won looked off to the near side while goma tries to force it through lucho deflects Look at Alfio there, he'll be writing it down. More heading practice needed. Maxi sliding into the middle. Good play. Along with Mascherano. Good run. Trying to break into the 18. No communication along the back line and a risky move to the inside, but it works for Saeed. Kept alive by the captain, Hassan. Fati. A good run there by Maxi Rodriguez, but didn't have a target to play into the box and get it back. Burdiso, so versatile, can play anywhere along the back line and has. Isn't that the versatility, his benchmark as well, as well as longevity? Mascherano, forward for Cruz, play on. Lucho on the far side. Abradu coming over, back for Mascherano. Liverpool man. Pushing it forward for the Aguero, the turn, oh! the chip. Not a bad idea, but El Hadri had stayed back. It's Lucho that tries, the adventure is here, and it's not a bad effort, but there's just not enough meat and potatoes on the chip. Great idea, tremendous invention, but again, not enough on it. You'd rather be heavier with your touch. You've got to beat that goalkeeper first before you get it underneath the crossbar, but Lucho, just not quite deft enough to tackle. Stolen away from Abrabu, and here comes Argentina. Great steal by Gago that early. Yeah. Aguero with He's help. He's in. He's on. A little bump, a push, a trip. No. Down goes Goma. Looks like he was hit in the back of the head. Super defending this. Brave. He keeps up with Cruz. Goma reaches in. Does Cruz get a little bit of an elbow reaching in right here? No, nope. just a bang. I think he catches the cleats of Cruz. Let's take a look. I don't see anything. Wonderful run, though, and good connected football by Argentina. Maybe Goma nicked himself shaving his head this morning. That was strange. Ani Said coming in on this play. There's that earlier run by. Maxi, he needed a target to use as a wall to get the ball back, Phil. Again, straight on to Assam El Hadri. Lucho getting very involved, but for the most part, not effectively. Just that one attempted chip. Now, 
Off to the far side. Mahuad forward. Moteab and Abu Trika coming back from an offside position. Our first flag of the day. Fairly, but by maybe half a body. And that's one of Abu Trika's real strengths. Here he able to find that space. That's where he's made his good young name. One of his strengths. Always good at finding those passages of space and inviting good telling balls onto him. He is one of the players that scored a lot of the decisive goals for this Egyptian side. Argentina keeping them nicely subdued. Now the Albi Celeste, just in the last five minutes or so, starting to find their clockwork rhythm. Gago having a nice prompting game. Near side. Painsa rolls it in. Lucio de Gago off to Macerano. Back for the Real Madrid mid. Over for Zanetti. Dummied through and back to the corner. Javier, maybe a few years younger, could have caught up with that one. Kept in play, far side. Now, Shadi looking to send it upfield and does. The player we were expecting, and I was certainly hoping to see, lead the lane for Argentina was Cavinaghi. Me too. Might see him in the second half. I hope so. Little mighty might, not much bigger than Aguero or Messi, but plays a totally different game. That success with River never quite able to duplicate it on the international scene. All the way back, and Pato comes off of his line. Slam forward, Goma stepping up, flies back, and a bump from behind. The whistle against Shadi Mohammed. Only one shot for Egypt, seven already for Argentina. Painsa trying to get around Fati, over for Gago. In a good game, Gago. Lucho with space. He's been foot perfect in this opening 24 minutes, the Real Madrid man. Pairing pretty well with Mascherano to this point, although not a great play by the Liverpool Red. Off for Goma. Goma tryout with Blackburn in the offseason. Didn't quite work out. Back to Egypt. Now off to the far side. Syed Mouad. Mouad into the middle in between Zidane and Moteab. Egypt gets the outlet pass, but a poor run. And what are they going to call on this one? Heinze for a pull. Didn't see anything. Algerian Jamal Hemodi with the quick whistle. Colocini. I'd like to see him back out there. He's finally seemed to have regained his confidence. Let's take a look if there's anything here. Oh, that's, that's a very dodgy call, that. A contact game referee. And there was very little contact there. Ball chipped into the middle, headed high away by Cruz, who dropped to the back line. Now a chance. And it was Zidane with the blast. He hits this one rashly, and maybe he could have tucked it a little bit towards the end lane there. And tried on for the cross, because he wasn't going to get anything. He's Totally well covered. Good lift over Gago. Gets the corner. Abu Treka takes it. It was Treka who scored the cup winning goal just a couple of months ago. Launches this one high to the back post, but it will sail out of bounds. His accuracy a little bit off target this time. Two goals in a row. The final two goals for Egypt in the semi final and the only goal of the final. A good look at Zidane, and that's one reason Werder Bremen wanted him, and one reason Hamburg picked him up. 
flashes of brilliance, but unrewarded. Ahmed Hassan, a little puzzled look on his face. The Pharaohs have withheld an Argentina barrage to this point and kept it scoreless in less than 20 minutes remain in the first half. And that'll do for Shihata's men, He's subduing them and the threats of Cruz and Aguero. Aguero, for me, still to come out of the long grass, Phil. Still waiting, lurking. We have a good support with this big man on the ball. Really, truly little and large. Aguero being playing tremendously well for the Atleti. Single-handedly dismantled Real Madrid there the other week. Ball nodded down by Motab out to the far side. Zidane making the run, cuts to the inside, tripped up from behind, another whistle on another free kick. Strong running by Mohamed Zidane. And Mascherano forced to foul. He looks hurt. This is something we hadn't seen to this point. As soon as he gets the ball, direct towards goal. Certainly falls strongly on that shoulder, but he should be okay here. Had his legs taken out from behind. Dangerous chance here. It looks like Ahmed Hassan wants it, but Hosni might have other ideas. Finally down to the players. Wanted a few surprises. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Hain said not happy with the way the whistles have been coming. Nago working with Pato to line up the wall. Abrabu standing over it. Looks like he's going to claim this one. The number eight. A beautiful position for him to curl it towards the top corner. If Abadanzi will take something special to beat the big man. Lifts it, deflected Nothing. off the wall, and out for a corner kick. Argentina, something burning in their gut way back in November, the 2-1 loss against Colombia, which showed Colombia is for real. And they'll get a chance for... Oh, wipe that one away at home against Ecuador coming up in June, so... Almost half a year in between this long marathon of qualifying. Yeah, and after that game, Phil, they've got their big enemy, Brazil, after that. In Brazil. Well, that's the real statement game. All the way back to El Hadri. Hani Said. Wail Goma. 63 caps for Goma, now 64. Quarter hour left to go. Here's Motiab, who is shut out in the African Cup of Nations. Trying to prove his worth here today, Ahmed Hassan. The best chances for Argentina have all come off those set players. It's not a great sign for the Albi Celeste. Always so inventive and creative, but they've been subdued by Egypt, and it goes back to those missed chances of Tibin Kelly's. Perdiso and Heinze with their heads. That would have settled this Argentina team down a lot and allowed them to play a little bit more adventurous, pushing up Zanetti and Heinze, but still working to crack the code, defensive code of Egypt. Abrabu off to the far side. Mahwad has help. Gets it to Abrabu. Back into the middle. Hassan the spin. The shot. Right footed and on two hops, an easy. Grab for Bonanciere was Zidane who curled back to the midfield. First shot on goal.
Gago gets stripped a little too confident. Yep, too casual, that's for sure. Abutrika dropping it, ball blasted, deflected near side. Fatih with a cross that will curl and stay in. Abrabu, no, it's Zidane. It's taken half an hour for Andrew Gago to blot his copybook, and he nearly gets put to the sword for it. And getting caught in a position, a cheap giveaway by Gago and Egypt. Try to capitalize, still feeling that shoulder. Zidane. Nice ball. And say into the middle. Here's Gago. Back for his Real Madrid teammate in trouble. Ay, ay, ay. And now kicked down by Ahmed Fati. That's got to be a booking. Fatih looks like he was hit first, but that's not a good way to retaliate. That's surprisingly not going to be a booking. This is really reckless and hard. Fatih just comes out and absolutely sighs through Gabby Heinz here, who was doing well to protect the ball, shield it, and he was pushing back into Fatih, and he'd had enough of it and comes out with the big blade, and it's rightfully gone into the referee's book. Here you see Gabby pushing back. It's legal. He's got... It control of the ball, he's holding him off. All right, but there's no need for that sort of cynicism. Looks like Fatih got a little bit frustrated by the hands flailing. And same point, better ways to respond. Well, kiss and make up, that's good. Vasili trying to bring the glory days back for Argentina. Well, this might be a second coming of glory for Egypt. Got to be considered favorites for one of the African births for 2010. You would think so, Phil, but they haven't been to the World Cup for quite a long time, Egypt. Despite their championships of the African nation, yeah. Restart from Maxi into the area. Cleared away by Goma. Out to the midfield. About 12 minutes left. Gago rolls it all the way back. Zanetti leaves it for Bonancieri. Etafe keeper long up front for Aguero. Goma heads it away. Avrabu back. Mawad. Abutrika. Back to Saeed, into the middle for Shawkey, and he almost loses it. Difficult ball from Abu Trika. Creative midfielder ball out playing back. it back, and Saeed nice sending lead. it long, but oh. the offside flag comes up. And you can see the screaming from Shahate. It's not at the referee. Now a blast with a bonus. Eddy off his line, and he retreats to keep it out of the net. I think it's going wide anyhow, but Abendanzieri not taking any chances. But Coach Chihata there, as you said, Phil, he's not screaming at the referee. I think he's screaming at Zidane for not holding his lane better because that was two passes out of the back for Egypt that really could have opened up Argentina. Well, it did, but unfortunately Zidane not holding his lane. Maxi staying on the left. Lucho back on the right. A little back heel flip from Cruz. Into the middle, Kuhn trying to turn, double teamed. Clearance pulled back by Gago, here's Einze. Maxi down the line, flag stays down. Back heel, launched into the middle by Heinze, deflected and out for the corner. Close Heinze's to an offside. ball played in is an absolute beauty. And I think it's Maxi that gets a touch on, leading it over the top. Bad giveaway this, and there's that chip, was going just wide of the net but still and that's one of those bad days of old for Pato Bonacieri something that over the last couple of years he seems to have gotten rid of bad distribution he almost paid the ultimate launched high first corner I think Egypt's been able to clear there have been six of them already up the line for Zidane drags it down well defended and that's why Mascherano signing that long-term deal to stay at Anfield. I feel sorry for 
Abbott Dance here with that ball being played back and coming to him like on a roller coaster. Zidane starting He's to take taking control. Some bad hops in front of the keeper every time Argentina plays the ball back to him. Asanto Abrabu off to Mahuad on the far side. Tayyad Mahuad into the middle and tapped away. No communication and Pato frustrated as he's forced to push it out for the corner thinks he's going to be able to claim this one easy but it just holds away from him Abandanzi here he comes looks like it's going to be all of his but just hangs away they'll do it again from the flag well, they didn't get a whole bunch from Mohamed Sidan in Ghana but he is the type of player that can take a good team and turn it into a very good one Mohamed Schalke with the earring. Ball launched in, deflected. That should not be offside, I don't believe, because it came off of a deflection. But regardless, the flag comes up. Let's take another look. It was an outlet pass, so where was he at the last point? Regardless, Ahmed Thalbi had the flag up and a free kick for Abon and Sieri. Third offside against Egypt. Bail Goma. Solid game in the back. As you pointed out, Argentina really only dangerous on set plays so far. So give Egypt's defense credit. Wing player has been certainly involved for Argentina with Maxi Rodriguez in particular and Heinze on this side, but on that other side, Zanetti's been a lot more stay at home. Lucho Gonzalez just flirting around the edges of the game still. Now into the top, looking for Mad Motiab. Long ball out. Trying to clear it. Abrabu off to the near side. Ahmed Fati. Fati. Again, a miss hit. There's some pretty strong winds, about 14 miles an hour, but I don't think that could be used as an excuse. Their service from the right flank has been abysmal. Fati can play right back, right midfield. Goma can play on either flank or even in the middle if need be. There you see the ball dome of Wild Goma. Fly into him hasn't been too prolific, has it? Little a trip, they say. Nothing to it, says Shockey, but Aguero needing to put his boots back on. He certainly comes through Aguero there. Another set play. Cruz very dangerous. Well, they're all dangerous upstairs here tonight, Phil. The big targets for Argentina. They just need to put that final little delicate touch on it. Maxi with the touch. Flipped on, but off target again. Again, it's Di Michelis. No Colocini, no Milito. No Took Crespo either. This one. I'm not going to blame him for a, a miss on this situation. He meets it nicely, just kind of arrow it. Fans getting on El Hadri a little bit. I think they want to see this game in action. They don't want any delays as we get close to halftime. About five minutes left. Five shots for Egypt, and in fact, they've had now more, thanks to Zidane, on target than Argentina. Argentina only one save forced from El Hadri on seven shots. Another outlet pass picked up, Sayed Mohad. Mohad leaves it. Abdrabu into the middle, gets tangled up with Motiab. On the turn, Mawad tries to get to the end line and is deflected by Bordiso and out for the corner.
far side tackle Goma. About three and a half minutes left. Nice control by Cruz. into the middle Mascherano deflected cross Zanetti there to track it down Mascherano Lucho good ball Zanetti on the run the oh. pass for Cruz it looks like a pull down in the box certainly seemed to be a little bit of a push there Phil nice connecting football this time by Argentina finding the way through Egypt Five or six beautiful passes. Again, the final ball just evading Aguero. Good ball again. Look away past ah. far side. Lucho hesitated, took the local didn't route. He? Yep, hesitated. The ball was a little bit short for Lucho, I believe, but still should have been across the player and in front of the ball. with the chip all the way to the back post but not able to keep it on target it was Maxi and out it goes goal kick <coughs> and Hadri still getting some booze probably a few of the Al Ali fans in attendance as well not happy that things have gotten a little ugly well, another ugly situation for a man in the blue and white shirt Mascherano facing Serious criminal charges back home in England for what happened after the game for Liverpool. And there's some serious ramifications going to come from that when he gets back home. And Benitez was very aggravated at the player himself for taking on this trip, but I have no say in it. Pulled back. Maxi now back on the left. Lucho cutting back to the middle. Off to Rodriguez. Egypt just settling back, trying to hold on until they can get possession back. You can see that solidity right the way through the team. They're not. They're very penetrative side, but they're very well organized. This is a team that's been playing together for a long time. Argentina working to break them down. Zanetti. And just not having that final piece of invention. Play on as the ball stolen away. Off to the far side for Sidan. Sidan helping Egypt to the Cup of Nations win as he draws the foul here. Perhaps even bigger, you see him wearing the number nine. He's also, I guess, in effect trying to wear the shoes of the legendary Hossam Hassan who used to wear that number for Egypt 170 times I mean that's pretty easy when you're a coach you already know one of your starting 11 right off the bat but he retired back in 06 still playing for club ball Ali Fihad but not on the national team anymore and they get their first win without him trying to get a big one here Hadri and again the Al Ali fans letting him know what they think. Acrobatic clearance by Gago. Poor outlet pass from the middles and at the I make that Mascherano has not had a good game so far in the first half, which is now in the books. Hassan Shahata heads to the dressing room. It's a scoreless draw here at Cairo. different reasons for getting into shape but there's only one solution a Bowflex power rod home a quick look to find out who might have a uniform off 
that was on or vice versa but some changes need to be made even though it looks as though Alfio Vasile is going to go with the same that started this contest without Messi without Riquelme there is no creativity and certainly you have to be a little sympathetic for Cruz and Aguero up top because really truly you need the ball to be dangerous and they haven't had a lot of supply you see the boys in the subs track suits waiting to get in but Alfio Basile Phil you know when you come into a game like this you're supposed to be asking a question of the rest of the group and ask hopefully get some answers we said in the preview without Raquel me this team is entirely different and we know that going in missing Tevez and the likes of Messi Cambiasso there's not going to be a lot of invention in this side but still you would have expected more out of the likes of Mascherano, Gago, Lucio Gonzalez in particular and Maxi Rodriguez who hasn't had a bad game but it's just not quite enough. See Argentina already on the field, Egypt coming out and as we take a look at some of the chances Zidane a little bit slow in the first 10-15 minutes but started to take control of this game and if he actually had someone up front with him maybe a little bit more mobile than Imad Motiab they might have actually had a goal a strong powerful player the Hamburg man he has been the danger man for the Egyptians no question of that but like you say Phil it's all been created off of his own foot and he hasn't had a lot of service either the space for Argentina to exploit down the flanks and you would think that Heinze and Zanetti are going to start being a little bit more adventurous and pushing up for Basile in this second half. He's certainly got to change it up a gear or so, Alfio, and ask the boys to come out with a little bit more oomph about them and take one or two chances. The headers have been the most frustrating part of it, but this was chance for me was the best. And then it was Heinze. And then soon after that, Di Michelis, Aguero had one or two close little sniffs around goal, but again, nothing else. And Mascherano not being able to unload. So, well, beginning of this game, we kind of asked, what do you look for from the two coaches' perspective? And I guess. Uh, I get a midterm report card for Alfio Basile right now. Well, you know, we talked about the FIFA rankings, Argentina, number one in the world, not looking anywhere near like it right now, got to be stated. And this team in the red are number 30 in those rankings. For me, it's been a very evenly balanced game with neither side really shining. Alfio got to be a little concerned that he, his team just didn't come out and show enough of the fangs that we always expect out of Argentina. By their biggest fans, just a little disappointing. as we watch Jamal Hamodi getting set to start this second half. No changes apparently for either side. And we are underway. We talked about the midterm report card for Alfio Basile. The one thing I would say, substitutions, we're talking about the youngster Perhaps checking in Ezekiel Lavezzi, another one of those new Maradonas. Now for Napoli, I guess following in the footsteps of the master and the older veteran, Fernando Cavanaghi, with his return to glory. The one person I would actually like to see, though, is back on the other end of the pitch. That would be Pablo Zabaleta. Put him in for Lucho Gonzalez and let Zanetti push up to the midfield because. Zanetti has the ability 
to change a game, but uh, there really is no one on the bench. That I think they can do that from the midfield better than Zanetti. Well, you're the one for Alfio Nico with three at the back because certainly his men at the back have got enough in their locker to contain what has been a bit of a pop gun attack led by the athleticism of Sedan, but really. Here. And meanwhile, for Egypt, Hassan Shahata, somewhat pleased in the defensive side, obviously not giving up so many set plays and so many open shots off of them, but needs to do something to give Zidane some help up front. Sure. It's really problematic for both teams. It's certainly Argentina's class, you can see through a fog that it's the team in the blue and white that have got the nice variations about them and skillful touches on the ball but this team in red just uh, showing some isolated threats and Argentina need to get that goal to start putting the nerves to rest here here is Zanetti pushing up not exactly the way I was thinking more like you were talking about maybe have him come up and leave three in the back here's El Kun. And Aguero loses it in a battle with Mohamed Shadi on the far side, and Schalke goes down in a heap. Looks like he took the earring out of the half. Maybe the typical tape tenacious tackling by Kuhn gets away from him, just pinned it into that corner, and well, shackled by Schalke. And Alfio has a point there, and that early challenge should have went for his man whistle from the stands not from the field of play paints it take it back the other way Cruz can you blame Cruz can you blame Aguero I can't I don't think they've had anywhere near the supply of bullets that they need to feast on been a couple of chances again isolated flashes across the box that Cruz were just missing out on but he has a great opportunity a little good there's his big man one versus two but Aguero worth his weight in gold him. he's in gets it through oh. deflected from the ground great play by Hani Saeed as he lunges and keeps it clear now a long-range blast off target from Lucho again and out for a goal kick Mohamed Schalke, it looks like it might have been again. Down to strip it away. Sad eyes on Lucho. It's not been a good night so far. And there you see the nasty words coming out. Lovely slipped in ball this for Kuhn. And look how close he is to getting round the final man, Mohamed Schalke. He just doesn't get that rub of it right there. Alfio sees it. No look on his side so far. Okay, now, the other option, and we see how dangerous he is around the area. Maybe pull Aguero back a little bit deeper into the midfield. Leave Cruz up front to try and get some possession. Or is that taking Aguero too far away from where he can do the most damage? Of course, yeah. Nice move by Mahuad. Rolls it back to the middle. The captain Hassan. I think the, the, the actual strategic move for Asili would be to employ an extra midfield player, take one out of the backfill. Maxi chugging As this forward. game goes on, his second half. Said, back to the middle for Vail Goma, who launches it out. It'll be an Argentine throw. Spent a little bit of time with Sheffield United before returning back to Egypt. There's Colocini. Like to stay in La Liga, and if he keeps playing the way he is, he will. Could certainly put in Cavagnaghi and drop Aguero into the hole, and that would be another additional bit of spicy ingredients for the Egyptians to contend with. But right now, Egypt looking just too comfortable in this friendly. Nutmeg pass. And it's Hassan into the middle, but it got away from him. And now let's see what Argentina can do on the counter. Gago trying to get tricky, but it was the pass to him that somewhat handcuffed him. Aguero now challenging with Cruz, headed to the near side. 
squad. Coming back to get the pass from Saeed. Hassan bumped off the ball. Mohammed, little back heel, starting the break the other way for Abdurabu. Ahmed Fatih. Zidane back into the midfield and now pushing forward. Hassan back on his feet. Fatih. Abu Trika gets it back. Again, the cup winning goal for the Nations Cup. In some way, scoring here against Argentina might even be a bigger goal. Was well, Argentina coming in as heavy favorites? Well, the even money favorites with English bookmakers, he can get three to one for Shihata's men. But we're bemoaning the lack of invention, creativity in Mascherano's men. But you've got to remember, Phil, this Egypt side, and it's this full team, this full encounter, champions of Africa, and beat some big teams with star-studded players. So this isn't exactly a high school team that Argentina's playing against. Zanetti back into the corner, fakes the outlet, and... But still, you would think it'd be a little bit more coming on, and now from the city just looking on, thinking, well, where's it going to come from? Because we've been through it with a fine tooth comb, and there's really nothing standing out that Argentina have been good at in this, in this game so far. Well, when you think about it, they're missing in the midfield, and you cannot rely on one or two players if you're going to be a World Cup champion. And you're almost having to go back to, and pardon the expression, because I've been a fan of theirs, but retreads like Aymar and D'Alessandro sure. to hope that they can do what they have not been able to do in the past. And without Riquelme, without Messi, Argentina is, I don't want to say average, but they're not playing like a champion today. Abrabu. And as you pointed out, Egypt somewhat is, maybe not as a champion, but as a team that has played together. You can see that tournament tested. I don't think Basile would ever, it's not in his repertoire to really go with a true three at the back anyhow, Phil, but still, you know, he went with more like a 4-5-1 in some of the early games and had some success there, but again, comes back to Raquel, me uh, without him in there. Here we are half a side. Ball back to Saeed. This is the type of game that Egypt would like to play. They could take pride from a 0-0 or a 1-0. They won the cup on 1-0. And if they can just keep the ball away from Argentina, it's going to be hard for the South Americans to score. Sure, well, it's been perfect from Shihata's man. It subdued the early going in the first half, wrote a little bit of luck on the set players. Subdued up front. Now it's going all according to plan for Egypt. Now on the break, Mohamed Abu Trika off to the near side. Pushing up is Saeed from his back. Cuts it back to his right, launches it to the middle. Deflected away, and Egypt will get it back as Hani Saeed knocked to the turf. Hassan tried to get tricky with it and sends it out. One sharper play from the captain. In some ways, you could say this is a coach's dream because it gives you a lot to, I don't want to say yell at, but to work on, and there's nothing on the line. And hopefully, from Argentina perspective, the players will listen. Good work up the line. Hassan outside of the boot pass, sneaks it through. First clear chance for Motheb, and he blows it. Back for Hassan. And a foul and a restart. Ahmad Motheb perhaps groaning more about the missed opportunity. The Al Ali forward. Talk about how good Mohamed Zidane is. Well, Motheb, even though he struggled during the Cup of Nations in his time with Egypt, scores a goal almost every other game. So he's due. Flip down the line. 
Can Mawad get there? Not before Zanetti. Pupi launching it along downfield. One back by Avrabu, but Mascherano gets there. Strong play by Shockey again. Doesn't find the mark. Lucho Gonzalez off on the far left now. Deflected off Fati and out. It'll be a throw in for Argentina near midfield. Is Basile waiting too long? It is a friendly. You get more than a handful of changes. Almost sneaking it through. Well, he's keeping faith in, you know, some of these players feel that he put a lot of trust in, as said in the early, early going of this game. The one that for Basile he's looking to really stand out is that man lunging in there, Lucho. But are friendlies for keeping faith or for experimenting? You know, one, half a dozen of the other. It's certainly experimentation to be called upon but again you remember that this isn't a full Argentina squad this are the European based players and you can tell nice ball into the corner Fati with the long into the middle snap down off target good ball for Motheabin instead it just goes wide first chance we've seen them able to set up some wing play here and surrounded by four blue and white jerseys, he still gets ahead on it. First shot of the second half. Out to midfield, trying to get it to Aguero. Cruz now migrating to the middle. El Kuhn on the flank, battle of 11. Oh. Sweeping it inside to Maxi, who almost brings it under control. He's got to create something out of nothing here, Maxi. It's a fired in ball from Kuhn, and he nearly gets away with it. Trying to rein it in behind him, spinning on the move. Hassan, the back heel for Alvarabu. Bodies flying left and right and dancing around the blades. It was Fati. Now another chance to the near side. Zidane reaches out and the ball. arm to pull it down, shoots it wide of the post, and that could be a card, but why? Don't the referee will put him in the card for this, but it's a certain handball. Abu Trika, nice ball as he's starting to get involved. Not that Chihata's speech was better than Basile, but Egypt coming out a lot stronger in the second half. The shame was a lovely ball by Abu Trika and Zidane has to gamble with it. Cheat, try to get away with one. Ah. Stolen away, Hassan again. Better ball again. Again for Abu Trika. Charging up the middle. Keeps it himself. One down from behind by Heinze. He's going to get a free kick just outside the area and a card against the Real Madrid defender. It's a card, I think, for the demonstration from Gabi here. And let's take a look. Does he have an ax to grind? Reaches in, there's very little contact there. Gabi Haynes here is victimized by a bit of dodgy refereeing. There's nothing there. I'm seeing there's very little. That time, Abu Trika cheats and wins. The Al Ali midfielder waiting as he dribbled right into the heart of the defense for a touch. It's and a as good soon run. as he felt it. Yeah, it was a good run, Phil, but like you say, going down at the first sneeze of Gabi Heinz here. And this is a dangerous one for Pato to keep out. Pato having a few problems in the first half. By the way, talked about Hossam Hassan, 170 caps. The guy most likely to catch him, well, other than Landon Donovan, perhaps, at least for Egypt, is Abu Trek. He's just 29. He already has 130 appearances. And the playmaker's going to have a go of it here. 81 goals, 131 caps. Can he get 82? Lifts it up into the wall, deflects away. Hassan tracking it down. Nice steal. Aguero now sprinting forward, looking for help. Runs past the defense and bundled down. No whistle and no help from the linesman. Well, this referee calling it one way for Egypt and calling it another against Argentina because that was as much of a foul on Kun Aguero 
is what we just saw at the other end of the field moments ago. Maybe more. Yep. Goma long towards Heinze. Wonder if now that Heinze has a yellow card, they're going to try and attack him. A lot of Argentinians not huge fans of Gabby Heinze, but when you really consider over the last decade, he's probably been the only left back that's come close to laying a permanent claim since Sorin. Half hour left. Kept in play by Fati. Back for Mohamed Schalke. Good ball into the middle for Hassan. Deep possession. Almost a Paraguay type look. Deep 4 4 and then quickly sprinting forward. Goma bouncing it into the corner for Sidan. Keeps it in play. Does Fati. Has help. Fati in the area. Squares. Shot. And a save for Pato to deny Moteo for actually Abu Trika from point blank range. Seeing as one of the best players on the field, Abu Trika, but this is absolutely horrendous finishing. Beautiful football by Egypt. Away they take Gabi Heinz to the cleaners and set up Abu Trika for the match winner, and he chokes. But they have a long cross to the far side. It's Gabi Heinz that was victimized out wide, and then this ball played across right in front of Abandanzieri and Alfio knows he just got out of dodge right there the other side of it Shiahata cannot believe this miss might have been the best play of the game for either team well it was the consideration of the ball into Abu Trika from Fati as well Phil he laid it on for the number 22 right there beautifully here you'll see the touchback from Zidane and then Fatih squares it, but Abu Trika gets it all disastrously wrong. He could have been having a good bottle of wine on top of the pyramids tonight. Well, let me ask you, what's Basile waiting for? This game is slipping away. Gago draws the foul against the Sun. Nimichelis. Heinze, Gonzalez, Heinze, the off Zidane, nope, they're going to say clean out of bounds. Well, Cruz's nickname is the gardener, he might as well be taking root right now for as good as the service has been. Into the midfield, Maxi. Trying to run away. Kuhn flips it on. Maxi to the outside. Giving chase. Goma heads it up into the air, leaving it for Rodriguez. The Atletico mid. Drops it back. Cruz all the way on the flank. Mascherano spins it Three back ball. post. Zanetti to the middle. Touched! And it was Kuhn dashing in, pushing it wide. Well defended again, Aguero. Zanetti does everything right. Run is deep inside the box. A beautiful ball over the top from Mascherano. And again, last ditch defending. I know Ecuador was playing awfully, but until their last game. But if this is the team that Argentina takes against Ecuador, they might have a chance. No, they won't. I'm still looking for something positive to take out of this if I'm an Argentine fan, other than the fact that Riquelme is going to be healthy by June, we hope. And again, it's not Paul it just the one way as well, Phil. You've got to have respect for this team in red. You really do. They may not be the most illuminating with the football, but, man, they are tighter in the fish's backside. Ball to the top of the area, trying to spin away. Morad up the line and out. It'll be a throw-in for Argentina. And again, they've all played with each other for so long, Phil. Beautiful ball from Mascherano. Fabulous. And again, look at that. Reach in. Mohamed Chauki just doing enough to put little Kuhn out. Part of the best play for Argentina from the run of play. He's in. And a chance He's on, on the spin. Got to be. Roofs it. Goal 
for El Kun. Goal for Argentina. One mistake for the Egypt back line, and it costs them. One chance. The Celia finally puts a smile, and the Albi Celeste start cheering. This is classic Kun Aguero. The ball over the top, finding him, and the little man comes alive. Beautiful first touch here, settles it brilliantly, rifles it near the top of the net. Look at this for a first touch, heavenly velvet feet, and then they turn into fists of fury. Dagger finish by Kun Aguero. Waiting in the long grass, I said in the first half, well, a little scorpion just jumps out and stings Egypt. I have to say, somewhat against the run of play in the second half, but that's the type of player Aguero is. He is lethal if you give him an edge. He almost had it on the last play from Zanetti, and this one he does it by himself. Well, it was his pace, that strength to get away from the back line who have shackled him the entire part of this game. Saeed and Goma and Shauki, Mohamed Shauki have done very well containing Cruz and Aguero. But that one glimpse, the door cracked open and Aguero kicked it in. That first touch to settle it over the top, when you look at it again, it doesn't get any better. Well, for a forward to control that ball dropping over your shoulder Phil uh, is absolutely superb on the run and then knowing that Al Hadari was coming out at him more on the goal in a moment as the shot from Mahuad deflects and out to the near side Zidane coming all the way back to play it in my mind the brilliance even before that touch ball lifted in cleared away before Rabu can get there and down comes Argentina not even so much the brilliance but the danger you talk about that thin line the offside line and he plays in the shadows the gray shadows because it was his ability to kind of slide in alongside the defender and just stay on side and then as the ball sails over there's no one in front of him and he brings it under control as you point out but they're gonna be talking about him for generations if he keeps it up. Kavanagi getting set to check in for who? A few changes as well on the Egypt side, perhaps. Let's see, it looks like our first substitutions. Looks like a Mifsaki might be one of those. Heinze heading for the sidelines as is Fatih. No, Heinze just setting up camp. Looks like Ahmed Fatih might be the first player. Yellow card. Kamodi brings the wall back. 14 whistles against Argentina so far. on to the six headed clear by Gonzalez again Aguero got to keep an eye on him Goma does double teamed Fati still out there and he's going to be whistled for a foul <laughs> 70th minute Still the starting 11s for both sides. Even though there are six substitutes available. Well, Cruz oh, is out. Beautiful football that. Let's we'll see if it's Kavanagi, and it looks like that is him on the far side. It is. Rondo Kavanagi, man who made his mark with River Plate before heading across. He's on that river team. Oh. Sliding it back in. Mascherano taken off by Zidane and out for the throw in. Haven't had a clear look to see who it was that played that ball. 
over that distance. Uh, my money would be on Mascherano from that deep. It's a beautiful flighted ball. Roma gives the ball oh. up. A chance now again for Aguero from Lucho, looking. who might have been another candidate for that pass. Sure. But I agree with you. It looks like Mascherano from here. Fernando Cavanaghi now with Bordeaux, an unsuccessful trek after his river success to Spartak Moscow. <laughs> Down goes Zidane. <laughs> Welcome. Team Michelis comes through and leaves his mark on Zorro. Take a look at this. <laughs> Didn't even break a sweat. Goma to the near side. Gets a yellow card for his effort, joining Hainsa. There is Gabi. Forward for Mascherano. Out for Lucho. Gago fights through the challenge. Out for Zanetti. Gets it back. Good one-touch play here. Long blast. Maxi on a hop into El Hadri's arms. Bit by bit, Argentina starting to strangle the game away from Egypt. And here they are again. Well, you were asking earlier, Phil, of friendlies, the reason for keeping faith. Well, Alfio Basile just answered you there because he did keep faith and it has paid dividends and he should be complimented for it hasn't been the most glitter laden performance by argentina far from it but that's exactly what alfio basili wanted he wanted a test he wanted to see how they would handle without being with messi and tevez and of course the great roman Riquelme. We'll give him a few sleepless nights, I think, when he sees what the answer is. But that's international football. It's going to happen. And again, could be very much a World Cup matchup in a couple years' time between these two sides. And I think in some ways, Egypt has taken enough away from this that certainly, they won't be scared. Certainly, certainly. Mentioning Tevez, of course, he is suspended for the next... World Cup qualifier, so that's why Alfio hasn't called on the Man United man. Another yellow card. It's like the sun. Or are these the substitutes? Let's see. Just pushing Sanetti out of the way. Battle of captains. Mohamed Zidane exits. Gets a handshake. He's worked his socks off, hasn't he, Zidane? Certainly. Asked a few questions of Argentina's back line. Big, physical, strong player, of course. It's a nice lead ball for Gago. Looks like Ahmed El Mohamedi. Beautiful! Coming in, and Aguero oh. just wide. As brilliant as his first goal is, this one should have been easy pickings for Kuhn. Fabulously found by the Real Madrid man, Gago. Sweet dagger pass. It's inch perfect. He doesn't need to control it because the pass is exquisite to the 10th degree. And basically, Kuhn shanks it wide. And you can see also the new player. Then again. El Mohamedi just frozen. Chance on the turn, Aguero stops it and lifts it across, but Mascherano had missed, and now a missed clearance, and out comes Egypt. The first substitution for Shahata is someone to try and stop Aguero, and he almost gets golden opportunity seconds later. Well, Egypt needs a goal if they want to get back into this game, but right now they're worried about keeping Argentina off the ball. Abrabu. Mawad rolling it back for Hassan Abu Trika Fatih 
Still loose, and Lucho comes away with it. For Aguero, back to Mascherano. As Argentina answer their questions in that position with Mascherano and Gago as the safety valves? Uh, yeah, but I'm not sure if Alvio Basile really likes playing with those two players in his regular system, two holding midfield players, Phil. It's really not Basile's way. And as well as Gago has prompted throughout this entire game, and it was just advertised again there, he's got that creative side to him, as Mascherano has. He likes he's, more the cambiasso type. Yes, I believe so. But still, they're two great horses to call and out of the stable. Mascherano and Gago. Abu Trika trying to dribble his way through. Could not. And it's been one of those sorts of games where they, they've had to really work at it. Offside. Which is perfect for them. The type of players that they are. This game has truly suited them. And there's a man who should have capitalized again. He's not off. No, not at all. Well, all four flags have come from Talbi, the linesman on the near side. I think the Fati. one you've got to feel a little sorry for, Phil, and say sorry for, but there is Ducho Gonzalez because we called it early. He's a player that really had to stand up and be counted here today. You'll not get many better chances to impress. Alvio Basile would have taken into account Lucio's fine industry down that side. He has really worked hard and covered a lot of ground, but just hasn't had an impact, enough of an impact. Abu Trika in the middle waiting. He won't get the chance, a foul. Substitute Ahmed al Mohammadi against Di Michelis. Can play on the wing on the right side. 20-year-old out of NP. There's nothing there, Phil. There's nothing there. Watch again. Maybe gets us a knee. Might take that back a little, but not sure. And again, you say that mainly because of some of the things that have been let go the other direction. Four-man wall. Looks like Abhabu wants it. They might leave it for Hassan. Just over 10 minutes left. Touched the shot into the wall. Lifted back into the mix, onside. Snapped away before El Mohammadi can get there. And another whistle, a collision. Mm. Is it Hassan going in? Down goes Di Michelis. Normally don't see him rattled. Bayern Munich man down, and it looks like he might have collided with Heinze. Kellis just heading the back of Heinze. So is this going to be a drop ball outside the area? Because I didn't see a foul afterwards for the whistle. I think he just saw two players down. So Egypt might end up getting this one back. Down by a goal. This will add a little bit of injury time. And here as you take a look, there's the finish high. El Hadri, you got to forgive him. Might have gone down a little bit too early. McCoon would have found something else to do. <laughs> yeah, hard man, Phil, with those goalkeepers, man. I don't think the goalkeeper had a chance in hell of stopping that. Uh, come on, 35 years of age, 100 caps, he's still learning. And again, in my mind, you have to even take it back a little further to the way he was able to dance in the shadows of the offside line and then sprint for the ball and the clinical finish. Took him a while, took him longer than Lionel Messi to really get his feet underneath him in La Liga, but now both of them are red hot, and if anything, Aguero might be hotter because Messi's been hampered by injury. Needless to say, Javier Aguirre is glad he has him. Another sub getting set to check in as they shore up the front line. Mohamed Fadi, the Ismaili youngster, El Mohammadi to the far side. Egypt with some possession. 
near side for Motiab, who might be the player coming out. Nice control, top of the box, and then Mid. stripped away from Motiab. Mashirano, calm under pressure. Zanetti even calmer. Oh. Then gets away from him. And Hassan taken down. Egypt's captain's done a lot of that, putting out the fires and trying to provide a spark on the attack. She knows the game. Well, he had a good game, Abu Trika, but this game could be a lot different had he have capitalized on that sitter that he missed five yards out from Avondanzieri's goal, where he had a clear shot. Oh, here, what's this? Let's hope it's not Di Michelis. Looks like it is. Maybe after effects, he's done. They have Colocini loosening up on the sideline. I think he's still a little woozy. Absolutely. We said it there the other week when players get a concussion, man. He saw a nasty one just at the weekend. And hopefully, he's going to be okay. Yeah. Just sank to his knees. Just to Good game for Di Michelis. Did enough. Policini replacing him. Cavanaghi in, Colocini in, have Gabi Milito available should they wish as well, but all eyes on Di Michelis to hope he'll be okay. Well, he has no blood, and that's really, regardless of the fact that the collision was very, very hard onto the back of Heinz's head, who yeah. could be missing for Bayern Munich at the weekend. Kavanagi wearing a 19 and playing out on the wing a la Messi, but more of a lurker, a poacher. See how he plays with Aguero. Down goes Maxi. Mashihata still can take some pride from this, and it's still in striking distance. He also sensed the feeling that Argentina could well erupt over these final six minutes. And Hadley screaming at his defense. Good look at the man. 55 goals at River. Lifted up to the, the back post. Snaps to the back. Wow! And into the corner. Oh, what a goal. Past El Hadri for two. And it's Nico Bordiso with a golasso. The super had a, a loopy one. Finding the placement absolutely perfectly. Al Hadari got no chance this time. Bordiso. We said he had the first chance of this game, Phil, and he was screaming blue murder at the heavens. He's singing his praises in now. Beautifully flighted ball, but look at that for placement. That is absolutely out of this world. Maxi plays it in. He's got it all to do here. It's dropping us slightly behind him. No chance for the keeper. The placement is absolute perfection. The thing to consider, the normal play for Berdiso on that, and I think what Al Hadri is thinking, you saw the two players charging into the back post would be for Berdiso to head it back across for a back post header. But you could also see from the way he snapped at that, he saw Hadari off his line and flipped it over him and into the back of the net. That was intentional. That was not a miss hit. And that was a career goal for Berdiso. Well, mentioned the potential substitute, which has now turned into reality, Amir Saki. The Al Samalek forward checking in. 
And 2 0 for Argentina. And another sub shoot. Looks like it might be Kuhn checking out, judging by the reaction. It is. Good game. Wasn't an easy game, as he didn't get all the service in the world, but he did get the goal that counts. Uh, it's a real good performance. Basile would be extremely pleased with that effort in this danger. First touch, caresses it, settles it, puts it on a golf tee, and then whack, rifles it with his driver. Beautiful, all in one. So, checking in is Lisandro Lopez to provide a little bit of a spark for Argentina. Get uh, his third cap, the Porto-based attacker, again quickly into the attack. Defense responds for Egypt, but right now they are scrambling. Nietzsche coming through the Racing system, and he's been with Porto since 05. And as you pointed out, the fact that Vasile limited this to a European squad, giving him the chance to look at Rodriguez, giving him a chance to look at Lopez. Nicely. Now a nice overlapping run. Is it Heinze into the middle? Still loose Kavanagi. Good Sweeps ball. it back. Looking for Gago and out for Egypt. What a great little pass that was by Kavanagi. There's any other player, a lot of other players will just take a whack at it. But he really tries to find the intentional player again. Lovely ball over the top. Ah, watch that all day. That is outstanding heading of the ball by the Interman. And again, somewhat ironic considering how miserable Argentina was on open <laughs> set pieces in the first half. That they put the icing on the cake with that. Now you can understand why he was so incensed at himself in the first five minutes of this game for missing that clear header because he eats those ones for breakfast and yet the goal that he scored was against all the odds. That it was probably ten the most times difficult. Header, ten times more difficult than his first opportunity. El Mohamedi down the far side trying to get the cross in does and a lunging shot was it deflected? No, out for the goal kick. There, as you can see, he meant to do that, bending it into the far corner. They had Kavanagi there if they wished. Colocini was at the near post as well. Lots of reason for the Argentine fans to cheer. And for Egypt, well, consider it a lesson learned. They played a good game, but collapsed when it counted. They had the chances filled. They should have had their noses ahead. Let's not forget that. That brilliant chance by Abu Trika was the one that they could have went ahead with this game. And when you miss chances like that, you've got a question whether you deserve to take the game. Skipper comes off. In comes Omar Kamal out of Ismaili. Good game for Hassan but it won't salve the wounds. Anytime you wear the armband, anytime you wear the uniform, you want to go out there and win. No chance no. on either goal for any money. Especially for this, so it was just brilliant. Maxi looks like he's going to exit. And El Hadri putting on the armbands. Still a few whistles from the Al Ali fans. Ball for for Moteab. Fouls as he loses control. Gago, solid, maybe better than Mascherano from zero to ninety. But no, they're both. I think well, inseparable in this game. I think both the players have had very, very good, solid games in the defensive duties in the range of passes. Gago slipping in a couple of killer balls, Mascherano over distance. Was there a spectacular player? Would you put Aguero in that category today? Mm, not at all. I think it was a workmanlike performance, and Basile will be well pleased with the operation. That's a long way to come to play a game under these circumstances. They were focused, and they went about the business to win the game in the right way, but was it 
the great Albi Celeste footballer, well, they were missing the big conductor and and one or two other gems, like of Tevez and Messi. <laughs> They're three players that uh, tend to influence the way a team plays. Just a touch. Well, the ball that carried Egypt to the Cup of Nations title has found the net for Argentina. Kavanagi drawing the foul. This is, again, for a small guy. Very good back to goal. Let's just hope Di Michelis is starting to uh, come to and it's just a nasty case of a concussion. It seems to be that that is all it is. Of course, I guarantee you that back in Munich, they're probably already on the phone. Bolochini watches Pato come off his line. Poor clearance in the first half for Pato. This one was almost dot perfect, but Lopez was offside. Another player, Colaccini, playing very, very well for his club, Deportivo La Carunia. It was when in they Spain. inserted him back in, they started to win. Colaccini pulls Played. it away. Good ball. Chance for Lopez. Mohamedi back. Playing defense, he'd rather be on the other side of the pitch. Can't be much more time. Nicely done, that. So, for lack of a better word, this would be mission accomplished. Sure. A little too far down the line, and Egypt, right in front of the colonel, will get a throw. There's Colocini. Whistle for the foul. Ninety fourth minute. Mohamed launching it long. Motev again just coming up short. Good ball over the top. Again, if you're deep in this game, very tired now, but still be able to find another target. Mohamedi into the middle. Mohamed Shahi, the borough man. Good game. Very good game defensively when you consider he had to go up against Aguero. Ball square to the near side. And as Goma brings it under possession, Kamodi ends it. 2 0, the final score. Good game for Egypt. And a solid game.